Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Red Dog Projections. I'm Lucas. Unfortunately, Eric couldn't make it today, but he'll be back tomorrow for when we do our Georgia runoff prediction. Today, though, we'll be going through and reviewing our 2022 Senate election predictions. We made a final prediction, which I have pulled up right here. And we are going to go through each state, or not each state, but go through some states and discuss what we were surprised about, what we were happy we got right, and what we wish we did better. And with that being said, let's get right into it. All right, so election night was honestly pretty surprising for the most part. Uh, the Senate, we actually nailed almost perfectly, but uh, the House was definitely a surprise for us, uh, especially the margin and how close it was until we knew that the Republicans would take back the House. On the Senate side, in general, we got every single state right except for Nevada, which is funny because we made this exact same mistake in 2020. When we made our 2020 election prediction for president, we got every single state right except for Georgia, which we put as tilt R, when in reality it ended up being tilt D. In this case, we got every state right except for Nevada, except we again, we put this one as tilt R instead of tilt D. So we're going to go through many of these states and discuss what happened. So starting off with the safe states, really no surprises here from our prediction and the actual results. These are the actual results. Uh, and one thing to know, our margins are likelies are 5 to 15, safes are 15 and above, leans are 1 to 5, and tilts are less than 1 point. So for the most part, we did get all of the safe states correct, uh, and I think we also got most of the likelies correct. We did correctly predict that Utah's margin will fall below 15 points, which I'm pretty proud of because I don't think most people were able to, to figure that out. Actually, Evan McMullen looks like he might win by... Sorry, he might win by only single digits, which is very surprising for a super red state like Utah. Um, It does look like the only one state that we missed that we put as safe instead of likely was Missouri, uh, which is actually not too surprising because uh, Eric Schmidt is not a great candidate for Senate. So it's not too surprising that it ended up falling below 15 points. Uh, in terms of Democratic states, we marked as safe. Washington and Oregon, we put them as safe. They ended up being likely. Oregon was like 14.9, so it was really point, point 0.1 off. Washington, you know, in hindsight, we probably should have put this one as likely, but nevertheless, Pat Murray was able to beat a very overhyped Republican candidate in Tina Smiley. Uh, everyone was talking about how Smiley was so you know, popular and how she was going to somehow pull off an upset. Obviously, that did not end up being the case. Illinois was surprising, actually. Illinois was definitely closer than expected. Uh, I thought that Tammy Duckworth was going to win by more than 15 points and it ended up being a little bit less. Uh, New Hampshire, oh, we'll head to New Hampshire later. Hensel, uh, sorry, New York was definitely the most surprising one. We'll be discussing New York a lot uh, for sure. And the fact that Chuck Schumer only won by, like, I think 12-ish points, which a large part of that is attributed to Kathy Hochul only winning the state by, like, 5.7%. So this is a state that we'll be discussing a lot in the future and analyzing what exactly happened here. And uh, I think that's it for all the safe slash likelies. Now we're going to head to our uh, predictions for... The likely states, I think. Uh, New Hampshire, we nailed. Uh, I'm actually very glad that we got New Hampshire correct. Um, I think we correctly foresaw that Don Bulldog was a pretty weak candidate. As uh, Eric and I also discussed on election night, uh, each state basically had its own little wave. In New York, you had a red wave. Florida, a red wave. But other states across the country, you had a red wave. In New Hampshire, I would argue that there was not really a wave. If anything, a blue ripple happened in the state because uh, they definitely did not expect Chris Papas to survive this election. Nor did many people expect Maggie Hassan to win by like 10-ish points. But I think uh, the reason why we put this one as like it was because we saw Don Bolduck as a very weak candidate. And this is another example of how Republicans threw out a, an, uh, an opportunity for them to pick up the seat if Chris Sununu ran. I think that he probably would have won this state. Now, uh, heading to Colorado. Colorado, we actually put as lean. Uh, I'm actually kind of surprised that it went to likely. A big part of this can be attributed to uh, Jared Polis, who helped carry Michael Bennett 
really uh, over the finish. Actually, no, I don't want to say over the finish line, but really helped the margin for Michael Bennett here. And we'll see later that he, because of Polos's margins, in fact, um, Lauren Bober almost lost to Adam Frisch. Uh, but Jared Polis, very popular guy. He won in a safe margin for the governor election, something I don't think anyone foresaw happening. So Colorado definitely had that blue wave occur. Then we go to the state of Ohio, where we actually did uh, miss it by a little bit for the margin. Uh, I had predicted it would go below five points because Tim Ryan was a very, very excellent candidate. But J.D. Vance did end up winning here by a likely margin, I believe 6.6%. Uh, the biggest surprise was Mahoning County, which is that classic demographic for white working class voters that Tim Ryan, we thought, had a chance of winning. He ended up losing that county, which ultimately made this a likely state. Part of it could have also been because Mike DeWine kind of pulled uh, J.D. Vance up as well, uh, which helped his margin here. Uh, but nevertheless, we did expect this one to be a flip. North Carolina, we actually pre predicted to be likely are. And it ended up being lean. I guess also, I guess we should have realized that the state will be closer than expected with Sherry Beasley running. Uh, we thought that Ted Bell was just kind of that generic Republican candidate that there would have been no surprises. But that turnout was actually very surprising here in North Carolina because Democrats actually flipped a seat here uh, with uh, Wiley Nickel against Bo Hines in the House of Representatives election, which also most people didn't really see coming either. So that's North Carolina. Uh, the state of Wisconsin was expected, uh, I think, yes, we did put this one as lean. We did nail this one. One point was closer than what we expected, uh, to be quite honest. And also, we also didn't expect Tony Evers to win by the large margin that he did. We didn't expect there to be this much split ticketing. We saw Tony Evers win by like two or three points, while we saw Roy Ron, Ron Johnson I'm, I almost said Gary Johnson. Ron Johnson won by only one point here. And this is something we're going to be discussing uh, very frequently on this channel in the future is that 2022 saw the return of split ticketing. It's something that we didn't see in 2020. We definitely didn't see in 2021, but we saw it again this year. We saw states like Georgia and Wisconsin, lots of split ticketing occurred. And we did not foresee that split ticketing had happened. So a uh, one point victory for uh, Ron Johnson is actually a little bit probably disappointing for Democrats knowing that Tony Evers won by uh, the decently sized margin that he did. Heading now to the state of states of Wisconsin, uh, sorry, uh, Arizona and Pennsylvania, two states that ended up flipping uh, to the, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, Pennsylvania flipped to the Democrats. Arizona stayed with Mark Kelly. This was actually a little bit surprising. Both states had significant margins for the Democrats. Mark Kelly won by 4.9%, Pennsylvania 4.9% for John Fetterman. So honestly, when the most more of the votes come in in Pennsylvania, I do expect this to go to the likely margin, which is very surprising because we had this one as tilt D, and a lot of people actually did say we were wish casting because, uh, or what's the word, of bias towards the Democrats because a, a lot of prediction analysts like 538 actually put Pennsylvania as tilt R at the last minute. We had it at Tilty because we thought that uh, Dr. Oz was a pretty weak candidate and that turnout from the Josh Shapiro versus Doug Mastriano race would pull our margins up, uh, to pull the margins up for John Fetterman. This did end up being the case here. We saw that the margin increased significantly for John Fetterman, much more than I think anyone would have expected. Uh, we saw a 4.9% victory for John Fetterman here. He did very well in the rural counties and also very well in counties surrounding Philadelphia. Arizona, similar story. I think we did foresee a uh, more Kelly victory, but we didn't expect uh, it to be this much. I think part of it was because uh, Blake Masters was seen as a very extreme candidate, and a lot of Republicans did pull funding from the state uh, before the election occurred anyway. And then the last two states we're going to cover is Nevada and Georgia. In Nevada, uh, we saw... The only state that we got wrong this time, we predicted an Adam Laxalt win by tilt margin. Uh, Catherine Cortez Masto didn't end up winning by 0.9%. I think what we missed here was the Clark County stuff. Uh, we saw the turnout in Clark County immediately thought, hey, I think Democrats are going to lose here because the turnout was pretty bad. What we didn't expect was that Catherine Cortez Masto actually did pretty well with the Clark County voters. 
Uh, and this is another example of split ticketing here because we saw Steve Sisolak, the Democratic governor, lose to Republican Joe Lombardo. But we still saw Catherine Cortez Masto win those voters here that maybe Steve Sisolak didn't end up winning, which we thought was a little bit surprising. Uh, but it does make sense in hindsight because I guess uh, more of the blame for the unemployment and uh, possibly the COVID lockdowns, which definitely hit Las Vegas very hard, ended up being attributed more to Steve Sisolak instead of Catherine Cortez Masto, which explains why uh, Catherine Cortez Masto was able to win here because this was more of a nationalized election rather than a state by state basis. And then finally in Georgia, uh, I think we predicted a runoff, but then a Warnock win. That's looking like it's going to be the case here. Uh, we thought that Warnock would lead leading up to the runoff, uh, which we got correct. I believe Warnock won the uh, initial first round vote by with 49.4 uh, or 49.5% of the vote. Obviously, though, that doesn't mean much because this election is going to a runoff election. But we also nailed Georgia correctly as well uh, with the turnout there. And Georgia is another example of split ticketing. We saw Stacey Abrams lose by like seven or eight points while we saw Warnock win the first round votes here against Herschel Walker, who is a very, very uh, not great candidate. So tomorrow, we of course don't know the election results yet for Georgia, but tomorrow we'll be making our runoff prediction here on who we think will ultimately win this election because the runoff is coming up on Tuesday. So uh, that is an analysis of our election results. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the way we predicted these results this year. Uh, better than 2021. Uh, actually, I think they were actually better than 2022 as well. I'm oh, sorry, 2020 as well. Uh, in 2020, we messed up a few more states in the Senate, but we nailed the presidential election. This year, we nailed the Senate election pretty well. So overall, pretty satisfied with the results that we got. A lot more analysis will be coming about this election, a lot of the things that happened. Uh, but... Uh, with that being said, that's the end of the episode for today. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this episode, please hit the like button. If you like your content, please hit subscribe. We'll see you in our next episode tomorrow. See ya!